Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, I am Mohammed Ashur, uh, Professor of Geotechnical Engineering at Alabama a &M University. Uh, before I get started, I would like to thank uh, Tridurel for supporting uh, or funding uh, this project, uh, which is going to focus on the uh, down drag forces acting on collapsible soil when the piles are installed in collapsible soil that gets inundated. I do understand that the, uh, the audience, you have different backgrounds. So let me give you a kind of brief background on two main issues here in our presentations. The first one is the collapsible soil. The second one is gonna be the down drag force, the meaning of down drag forces acting on piles. For the, for the nature of the uh, collapsible soil, let me define the uh, collapsible soil. Collapsible soil, it's a kind of soil with loose structure and it maintains, it has large void ratio and the water contents of this soil is very low. And in fact, this soil maintains most of the time a kind of honeycomb structure. So this is a shape that you can see it here for the honeycomb structures. And this kind of particles, they are connected or bonded together or cemented with a kind of particles or grains of silt or clay. So as long as it's a natural situation, it's gonna stay like this. But the problem happens when you saturate the soil or the soil is inundated, it has more water, more moisture content. What happened? This structure is going to collapse completely, and you're going to have a kind of sudden reduction in the void ratio, and this uh, collapsible soil layer is going to settle large amount of settlement. That's why we call it problematic soil sometimes. This diagram, in fact, the one that you see there on this chart, shows you what happened. This is an odometer. When you have collapsible soil in the odometer, under pressure, pre-inundated, pre-saturation, it maintains the load, it takes the load, everything is fine. But once you saturate this soil, what happened? You'll see a kind of collapse or damage of the structure of this soil. And it's not gonna maintain this shape anymore and everything is gonna settle. So it's gonna suffer a kind of dramatic settlement in the soil. Is this a problem? Yes, it's a problem. Why? Because when we have piles embedded in this such kind of soils, when this inundation happens, it's going to create or generate a dragging force on the pile. What I mean dragging force? <clears throat> dragging force acting on the pile, it's an additional axial force that is going to add to the load coming at the pile head and is going to increase the load on the pile, cause the pile to fail or cause the pile to settle more. So this is a challenge. But when it comes also to the nature of the collapsible soil, we have wide range of the collapsible soil. And here in our study, in fact, we focus on a particular type of the collapsible soil. This type, which is sandy grains, and they are connected or cemented with clay and silt particles, and they are laying on the range of the sandy soil, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sandy soil or silty sandy soil or silt. We do not go to the clay type because the clay type, it has different nature and different behavior when it collapses. So, when you try to build a kind of shallow foundation in this soil, there is no way to do it because this foundation is going to fail. And that's why we switch to the deep foundations, but there is nothing without price. So in this case, when we deal with the down, when we deal with deep foundations embedded in collapsible soil, we have to account for the down drag force that should be calculated or included in our analysis. Sometimes we call it the hidden force because you cannot see it, but the pile is gonna sense it later on once the collapsible soil is inundated. <clears throat> How this happened in fact, the down drag force. Down drag force, in fact, there are different scenarios in life that could cause or trigger this down drag force on piles. The major three ones, you can see them in here. The first one, for example, it happens when you have a pile embedded in this soil profile, and then you have a clay layer here. And then when you put fill, which is very common in any construction project like roadways, bridges, things like that. So when you put fill at the ground surface, what happened to the clay layer? The clay layer here is gonna start consolidating. So it's gonna produce settlement. That settlement is gonna take with that also the overlaying layer. So the whole soil profile above the consolidating layer is gonna settle. This means that this soil layer when it settled is gonna create a kind of downward shear stress on the pile skin. And this is what we call it negative skin fraction. 
So this negative skin friction is going to generate the down drag force. So in addition to the external load that you have it here, you have also down drag force acting on this pile. And once you pass this kind of consolidating layer, you are going to have the shear stress along the skin of the pile is reversed. That's why we call the upper one there negative. We call the lower one here positive skin friction. So in this case, the pile is carrying two components of load. One of them is a down drag in addition to the external load. Okay, but what is the second scenario? There is a second scenario also that could trigger this kind of down drag force, which is the post liquefaction settlement of liquefied soil layer, soil layer. So when you have this, of course, you can see this kind of problem in the West Coast, in Washington State, in California, in the kind of highly seismic uh, zone states. So when the soil is liquefied, you are going to have exploder pressure. That exploder pressure after liquefaction is going to start dissipating. So the water is going to start draining out of the liquefied soil layer. What happens? The void ratio or the volume of the void in the soil is going to be reduced and the soil layer is going to settle. Again, it's going to take the overlaying soil layer with it and it's going to start settling more than the pipe and it will generate in return a kind of negative skin friction on the pile and down drag force. Third scenario, this is the one that we are studying here today. <clears throat> this is the one we have the pile driven or embedded in collapsible soil. So this collapsible soil in the normal case or the initial case, it's fine, good strength, everything is going well. But once this soil layer get some water and the water can come from the ground surface when you have uh, flood, when you have source of uh, surface water, or comes from the bottom when we have rising in the water table. So it's going to happen some way. So what happened that when this kind of collapsible soil gets saturated, as I mentioned earlier, is going to have significant reduction in the void ratio and it's going to settle, generating again negative skin friction and down drag force on the pile. So this is what we have in our study. So in this case, in order to deal with this problem and to, end, to produce a kind of design tool and analytical method to deal with this problem, we need some component to achieve this goal. This component to do this, number one, we need a correlation to develop a correlation or a model to evaluate the post inundation volume change or the settlement of the collapsible soil based on what, based on the initial or the original soil properties of this collapsible soil. So, we do need a model, so we need to understand or to calculate how much settlement, settlement is going to happen. And also we need to know what is the new or what are the new properties of this collapse of soil. Because once it's collapsed, it's going to have different properties. So we should be able to predict or evaluate the new property of the soil. Second thing, in general, when we deal with any axial loaded pile, here is the general model that all of us know it. It's a kind of pile divided into segments, and we analyze the pile under axial load segment by segment from the bottom to the top. That's fine. But what we need to do in order to analyze this, we need to have a model that will uh, describe or determine the side shear resistance along the side of the pile. This is what we call it the TZ model. You can see it here already. This is a kind of nonlinear relationship that's going to uh, describe the uh, transfer of the load from the pile skin, from the pile to the neighboring soil through the skin of the pile. Okay. So what do we need else? We need also a soil pile tip model. So also we would like to deal with the tip resistance here, how much load the pile can take when the pile settles specific amount of settlement or particular amount of settlement. This is what we call it the QZ model. So we need this one. These are common things. These have nothing to do with the uh, down drag forces so far. And then we need another model that will be able to detect the relative settlement between the soil and the pile. We call it interactive soil pile model. We need to know if the pile is settling more than the soil, neighboring soil, or the soil is settling more than the pile. Why? Because when the soil settle more than the pile, in this case, the soil is going to try to take the pile with it and it's going to generate or provide or cause this kind of down drag force. So we should be able to know when and how the down drag force is going to take place on the pile. And the third one, validation of the proposed methodology. Maybe you look at this and said, it's not a problem. No, in this particular project, it's a problem because having uh, looking for a test that deal with the down drag force caused by in, uh, in collapsible soil, really it's an uphill battle. It's very difficult to find this kind of tests. I'm talking about the full scale load test. So what do we need out of that? We need number one, we need this correlation. 
So we need to develop this in our study. Second, we need to develop the interactive soil bile model to know how the negative and positive skin friction is going to happen and how to calculate the down drag force on the pile. The third one to do the validation for the model because you know having a valid a model without validation does not make any sense. Okay, step number one. Now, in order to understand the behavior of the or the response of the collapsible soil when it when it's uh, inundated, I mean fully saturated in this case, we build a kind of empirical model here. Okay, this empirical model based on predicting or calculating a parameter that measures the change or the, the change in the uh, soil, the collapsible soil when it's inundated. What it means, it means that the potential of this soil to settle, how much is this settlement when the soil is inundated? So we develop this empirical relationship. I'm gonna show you how we develop this just in a moment. And it's function of three major properties of the soil. And these three major problems controlled, in fact, the settlement or the potential of the soil to uh, settle or collapse. We we'll call it the C sub P. Okay. So number one is the overburden pressure. Number two is the initial degree of saturation of the soil. As you know, collapsible soil most of the time exists in low water content or a low degree of saturation. Dry or semi-dry, something like this. 10%, 20%, 30% degree of saturation. So this is a very influential parameter that we should deal with it. The other one, what is the initial void ratio in the collapsible soil? And the third, fourth one is going to be the uniformity coefficient, which is not that significant. When we studied this, we found that these three parameters or properties, they are controlling the behavior or the value of the CP of the collapsible soil. If you take a look at this model, it's going to provide kind of very good uh, prediction. And you see the coefficient of correlation R squared is around 0.8, uh, uh, which is very good in this case. How did we predict this? In fact, we used around 240 samples, not from our work. It's from the literature, from other researchers. And they were tested under odometer, different void ratio, things like that, to come up with this relationship. So you can see this is just a kind of small part of the large, huge spreadsheet that we calculated to collect this data. This data is experimental data, not ours. <clears throat> so what happened that for every sample we have, we can get the water content, the gamma drive, pressure, and we the measured, experimentally measured CP not our calculated one, initial void ratio, initial uh, saturation ratio. So we can deal with the soil. In this case, we are going to have a kind of database for this kind of soil in order to predict or to develop a relationship. Here is the relationship that we came up with. And you can see that the R squared is 0.81. And here is the very basic and simple equation that relates the collapse potential to the void ratio. So in this case, we can calculate the change in the void ratio when the soil is saturated. And in, in this case, we can calculate the amount of settlement that soil layer is going to suffer. OK, when we did you this, have two minutes left, oh my gosh, I haven't. <laughs> OK, so here is how we plotted this one. So how we get the relationship for individually. OK. And here is the comparison with the previous ones. So once we get the settlement that we have it there, we'll be able to get the new properties, the friction angle of the soil. We can get epsilon 50 of the soil based on the new void ratio that we can see here. Now we have a soil with new properties that we can deal with it. Now we go to the interactive model, how to detect the negative and positive settlement based on what you see it in here. So we have TZ curve, we have a stress strain curve relationship. So in this case, we used our previous research to come up with the TZ curve and settlement. So this is not part of our new research that we see here. If you take a look at the current research, the current research, in fact, in the H2 is just deal with the ultimate capacity of the pile and compare it to the negative skin friction that the pile can take and get something to call it the neutral plane. Neutral plane means that above it is going to have negative skin friction, below it, uh, positive skin friction. But this one gives you the ultimate situation, not the actual load on the pile. And this is what our technique is doing. Our technique, in fact, if you see it in here, you can see that you have a comparison between the soil settlement and the pile settlement. If it's larger, you're going to have negative skin friction. 
If it's smaller, you're going to have most of the skin friction. So our technique detect this kind of settlement, relative settlement between the pile and the soil, and identify if the shear stress is going to be positive or negative. And in this case, based on the TZ curve. So we can come up with what? With the value of the down drag force, actual down drag force acting on the pile. This has been modeled, of course, in the flow chart, and it has been compiled in a computer code that can calculate this. This is just a kind of screenshot of the model that we are using, and this program is going to be released with the final report when we submit it. Okay, so validation. Validation is another problem. So luckily, we found two tests, in fact, that the, we were performing on that full-scale load test, and this was the soil profile that they had it there. They saturated the upper six meter of the soil and they tested the pile over there to calculate how much the down drag force acting there for that collapsible soil. We are using their data, in fact. So you can see here is the down drag force acting in the pile. Here is the variation of the CP over the six upper six meter that we were uh, saturated. And you can see here the prediction, the initial saturation is 20% and we are using their data, in fact. And here is the calculated or the measured uh, down drag force 186. What we get out of our model, 183. This is a kind of very lucky shot, in fact, to get that close in something like this. But we are using their input data uh, for the comparison. We do have, and then you can see a comparison between the soil settlement and the pile settlement. Above the neutral plane, it's down drag force. Below it, it's positive uh, skin friction, and the program is going to do all of these things to you. There is a second test, in fact, we use it here. I'm not going to go through this test, but this test, we are not supposed to get good comparison with it. We are not, because the saturation here, there are some things here that our prediction, if you can see it, let me go back there, you can see the degree of saturation here was incomplete, and it was from the bottom to the top. So they have some, not difficulties, but the way they do it, in fact, it was not for collapse for the soil. And if you take a look here, the saturation is 56. This means the soil has no much collapse potential to do, uh, to create a kind of significant settlement. But our prediction in the right direction of that soil. You can see here the down drag force acting on the pile down to the neutral plane, and you can see the positive resistance there. Okay, and you can see our prediction to there there because their soil was not fully saturated. Secondly, it did not have any potential. So our prediction must be larger than theirs. It doesn't mean that they are wrong or we are wrong. No, this means that it's rational to predict much larger down drag force more than what they had in the field. For the conclusion of that work, we can see that the study in fact presents a model that can determine and predict the collapse potential of the uh, collapsible soil both in addition one and get the properties of the soil based on its initial property, which is very good step to be able to read the behavior of the collapsible soil. Second one that the CP collapsible soil decreases with the increase of its initial saturation. That's correct. So and once it reaches around 60% or more, you don't have to worry about the collapse potential from collapsible soil because it's not going to settle or collapse that much. The last thing that the interactive model, I'm, I'm sorry, this is not the last, this is the third one. Uh, the presented interactive soil model predicts and determines the down drag force acting on the pile. And in addition to the association, the associating or the accompanying by response, meaning that I can calculate the settlement of the pile and the actual load in the pile in a mobilized fashion. It's very important because this is different from the current practice right now, which does not shoot at the actual response. In fact, it target the ultimate one, whether it exists or not. And the fourth conclusion that the variation of the axial load at the pile head influences the location of the neutral uh, plane and is going to change based on that. So our model can detect the variation of the neutral plane. The last conclusion I would like to list here, it's the, the additional full scale uh, field tests are really needed to improve uh, the validation of the program because two tests, in fact, is not, are not enough to make a kind of full certainty or confidence in any model, not in our model in general. And we like to use full scale models, not model scale model to avoid the problem of uh, scaling of the soil pile interaction issues. I'm sorry, I was going too fast because of the, the time limitation. And I really appreciate uh, any questions that you would like to address. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mohammed. Okay, uh, we got a question here. What is the expected mode of failure of the pile under down drag forces, under saturated conditions in glass bowl soils? 
Is there a risk of buckling sediment or some other mode of failure? Very good question, in fact. Number one, the failure that you expect in a case like this is excessive sediment. This means that the serviceability of the bridge, for example, if it's a bridge foundation, is going to be, in fact, affected by that. So if you expect, for example, 0 0.2, 0 0.4 inch settlement or one inch settlement for that pile, you're going to get more because you have hidden forces. So in this case, you will see your piles settling more than what you calculated. And if you do not consider this, you will be surprised why the piles are settling that way. So this is one of the things. The other thing about the buckling, this is a very good question because this is from the professional point of view. Sometimes we try to avoid the negative skin friction by using sleeves and the kind of casing around the pile. So the same like we are allowing the pile to pass this through this kind of dangerous, let me call it dangerous layer without it being in contact with the soil directly. So we put the pile into a kind of sleeve or casing to avoid it. But the problem when we do something like this, if the, if the layer is thick, the pile will not be supported, laterally supported, and that through that layer, the pile segment through that layer will not be that supported. And it's going to be under the risk or increase the susceptibility of the pile for buckling. Okay, so if you do this technique, you have to consider the buckling or to take the buckling effect in your calculation to uh, uh, account for that. By the end, both things are going to reduce the capacity of your pile, whatever you use, if you use the consider for the buckling using the technique I just mentioned, or you deal with the down drag force when you have it there. But the down drag force considering or account for the down drag force in the analysis is cheaper and faster and safer and it's going to last for longer.